Hi, my name is Chelsea Peretti, and I feel excited about being Conan O'Brien's friend. Hmm, I'm not buying it. I'm totally, <laughs> there was, I was totally, you're not buying it because it can't be possibly true. <laughs> no, it could possibly be true. It was the delivery. The mm. delivery was Should way over the top. Should I do another take? Nope, we're going to go with that one. Okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) i feel so excited um honored thrilled uh i'm thrilled to have you here i really Uh, am actually i'm really genuinely happy to be here i am i swear there's no way to sell it but i am um i first of all (laughs) i first of all want to thank you for your stunning portrayal of my assistant Sona <laughs> in your character as Gina Linetti oh, on uh, right. Brooklyn Nine Nine, because I will say something: you played you are play this iconic character, and it's one of your uh, thousand accomplishments. But you play this you play this character who is a terrible assistant, and I swear to God <laughs> that the I always thought like this character is so much like Sona, who's been my assistant forever. Yeah, and brilliant, then, and then gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> but I then see it. there's an episode where Gina gets an assistant. So Gina doesn't do anything. And then she has an assistant who's basically just writing down her insults, you know, and Sona got an assistant who works for me. And by the way, is a massive fan of yours and Brooklyn Nine-Nine Can she also- He, he. Oh, can he co-assist and also split assist me? Yes. Yes, My My current assistant lives in Joshua Tree and he's building like a hobo camp with yurts. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kind of- I'm kind of in dire need. Let's get the word out. He like remote assists me and he's not good with like dates and times. <laughs> That's me too. That's how I, I took really? It got so bad and the fans got to know Sona and they got to know that our relationship. So we did a remote once where I brought in a, um, was it? It was an it HR. Was an HR rep was an HR, from TBS. An HR rep from TBS, <laughs> an actual HR rep who's a real person. And she was kind of just talking to both of us. And she said to Sona, what do you think your issue is? And she said, I have a real mental block about helping Conan. <laughs> and I said, you're my fucking assistant. But I loved uh, when, when because David Hopping's the guy who took over for you. Yeah. And when that episode came out, David and I were talking about this because it's just hilarious that you got an assistant yeah. and you refused to help me. That's true. <laughs> it's the long con. It's very, very yeah. clever. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Anyway, it's a very yeah. uh, incredible portrayal of something that really happened in my life. I love that. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. That's all we needed. Thank you for having me. Oh, my thank goodness. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah. We have a lot to talk about because um, I am in addition to somewhat being in comedy, I'm also a lover of comedy. And you have been your, I was looking at all the points of intersection that you've worked in, in comedy. And it's crazy how many different shows you've been involved in, how many different, like, you know, whether it's stand up or whether you've, you worked for a bit, a a brief stint on SNL, um, you know, working with people like Sarah Silverman, like you've kind of, kind of been everywhere and done a lot of amazing stuff. And yet, what happened with me, you know? And you're almost, here. No, this, is the, this podcast is the sign that you- yeah, I think your point still stands. The point still stands that your career is in terrible trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's in tatters. <laughs> I need this more than you know. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I love comedy. I always, I think it's like my religion. I don't, I envy people who have a religious space in a way, <laughs> although right. lately not as much. But anyway, I, I just- Comedy is everything to me. Um, so was it always like when you were a kid? I think so. I mean, it kind of shifted in um, junior high because I was always like weird in elementary school. How weird? Because I'm I, usually I can beat people that say they were weird when they were a kid. Well, I didn't <laughs> self-identify as weird. Let's say that first. I was listed on on like if you went to the supermarket, <laughs> if someone passes a bad check, it would just say like weird kid. There was a photo of me. <laughs> I was I was identified, not self-identified, identified by everyone as oh, weird kid. That's how I, I was identified by others that way. And I didn't and I, I well, for example, I wrote a play called Gertrude's Gertrude's Revenge. Mm-hmm. And the subtitle was All Popular Kids Beware. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like never never a more heartbreaking play to be written by your child in elementary school. And yet no intervention of any kind. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, any child in the modern era who's named Gertrude 
would be justified in yeah. seeking revenge. Why would I choose that name for my protagonist? Enid evens the score. <laughs> like I chose a weird name. It was in my blood. Uh -huh. So yeah, I don't know. I just felt very uncomfortable in elementary school. Then junior high, I became, I flipped weird to funny. Mm -hmm. And so that was when I started to feel really funny. Did you, what was your uh, appearance like? How did you dress? Horrific, you... horrific. <laughs> like, Ugliest I've ever been. Junior high, I had a perm, but straight bangs and braces. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How, how do you pull that off? Yeah, well, do you go to two different fast. salons? I did that too. Bangs grow fast and I would curl them in one like hard, shiny curl like <laughs> forward. And then my nose would be like protruding out. I was so skinny that I had no, no face to balance anything. It just looked like a piece of paper, you know, under. A, a sh <laughs> sheath of bangs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my knees were bigger than my legs. Like, I, it was just bad. Seventh grade was the all time low. Eighth grade, it got a little better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. And what are you wearing? What kind of things are you wearing? Okay, this was the era of, you know, gap clothes, big, huge plaid gap shirts, big jeans. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, kids at my school were wearing Oakland Raiders jackets, starter jackets, mm -hmm. and Elise. You familiar with Elise Conan? I'm not familiar with Elise, <laughs> and I'm, I say that proudly. What is Elise? It's a shoe brand that was popular in Oakland in that era. And um, Nike Cortez, I'm sure you had a pair. Oh, sure, I'm wearing them now. <laughs> but not on my feet. Uh, uh, don't ask any questions. What? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that HR lady? Yeah. Bring her in. Right. Um, hey, that's a very vague joke. <laughs> no, I just love HR people. They're fun to talk they to. They really are. They're, they're a good time. They really are fun to talk to. <laughs> I love it when they come and speak to me for things I've Daily. done. Yeah, it helps everyone feel at ease. We've talked, Conan. Why? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I used to pretend to be the HR person. Oh, remember? I hated your HR person. Because what was it? Because you would just do this with your hands and you'd be like, shut up, go have a baby, I dumb just, uh, bitch. Like, wait a minute, I would not say that. <laughs> oh my God. No, I would put, Who are you? I would put fake, she would say, why is there no HR here? And I'll say, I'll go get him. And I would leave and I would come back <laughs> and I would... I'd be like, what's going on? Just suck it up. Yes. <laughs> Just suck it up. And she'd be like, that's you making glasses with your fingers. Yeah, that yeah, is not yeah. HR. Yeah. HR sucks. Admit that yeah. your crimes were greater than mine. No. All right, you're fired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you were very interested in comedy, but did you, when I was a youngster, I never thought, there's no way like this can be a living. I didn't think it was a way. To, is that something you thought? I mean, unfortunately, I like wanted to be rich and famous when mm -hmm. I was young. So mm -hmm. I think I did have I thought it would be easier. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I guess it is weird to want that and then achieve that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty uh, weird odds. But um, I don't know. Yeah. It's great. It's <laughs> really the best part about being famous mm -hmm. is people with a checkout line stopping you and saying to someone no. else at the checkout line <laughs> who's working another register, hey, you know this guy? <laughs> That's, That's second. This, you know who it is? And the other guy's like, no. <laughs> Come on, think. <laughs> I don't Break know. your brain. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> it's the weird kid from the bulletin board. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they would. I've, I've had that. That's my my, nice. late, my least favorite thing would be, oh, yeah. would be someone going, hey, you know this guy? You don't and think then, it's worse when they go up to you and go, what are you, you're from something. You probably don't experience that. I don't experience it as much because yeah. I'm, uh, no one else looks like me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. People have either. I'm racking my brain to think of someone who looks like you so I can say it. But it's I like, I've, I've said this before, but it is like if Big Bird from Sesame Street was walking through a supermarket and someone said, I know you from somewhere. You know, like you either yeah, know Big true. Bird or you don't. Right. Yeah.